Consumers now have so much access to information, the professional needs to go deeper. And the only way that the professional is going to be able to go deeper is to get really relevant learnings from the manufacturer. Welcome to the Smarter Building Materials Marketing Podcast, helping you find better ways to grow leads, sales, and outperform your competition. All right, everybody, welcome to Smarter Building Materials Marketing, where we believe your online presence should be your best salesperson. I am Zach Williams, alongside my host, Beth Pumpkinklov. And today we're talking about CEUs and what manufacturers should know about CEUs, how they can be strategic in their efforts there, and why it's important for you to be thinking about this now in 2022 and beyond. Educating your customers and giving them a way to continue their own education is such a valuable resource and service. And we see manufacturers do this well and some not do it as well. So we are really excited to welcome Jan Rutgers. She is the president and founder of the Vestibule School of Design. Jan, welcome to the show. Thank you, Beth and Zach. I'm, I'm thrilled to be here. We're really excited to have you. Why don't you take a couple minutes, introduce yourself, and tell our listeners a bit about your company as well. Great, thanks. Uh, so my name is Jan Rutgers, and I've actually been in the uh, home design business for um, almost 30 years. And um, you know, my passion um, has been kitchen design. That's where I did get my did get my start. Uh, but you know, right from the right from the start, especially because. Becoming a kitchen designer, you know, in the late 80s, um, it wasn't even a thing. And uh, so a big, big part of um, kind of developing that, that role was to be educated. So I had just graduated from university, I uh, got interested in home design and fell into kitchen design, but I spent a tremendous amount of my own time and effort uh, early on educating myself on um, everything to do with kitchens. So that's, you know, probably why I've landed where I am right now. So Cole's notes in the last 25, 30 years, um, you know, I, I became certified as a master kitchen and bath designer, one of the first ones in Western Canada. I became an educator. I started uh, teaching, lecturing, uh, you know, writing courses and you know, bringing other people that are passionate about the industry along with my knowledge. And I think really to kind of to back it up, I've, I've done just about everything in, in the design industry, from owning my own manufacturing facility, I manufactured high-end custom millwork out in Vancouver for 10 years, I had a to-the-trade showroom where I had a, a large kitchen and millwork showroom that was just to the trade where I, again, would, would educate them and offer um, you know, courses there to help them with their journey on kitchen design. And, um, you know, I've worked for manufacturers all over, um, all actually all over the world, North America and Europe, and, um, you know, got into product design for a while, did that for the last six or seven years, and have landed now um, as a, an online educator, you know, feeling that I can take a lot of the knowledge that I have and help transfer that to, to other people, again, passionate about the industry, and, you know, just branching out, helping manufacturers do the same thing on how they can, I guess, I guess, teach or um, educate their their customers better. So that's kind of where I am, and uh, I've had Vestibule School of Design up and running since uh, 2020, uh, spring of 2020. I think was a strange time for all of us, and that was my big pivot moment where you know I went um, you know strong into uh, the online education. So. Cole's notes, but I could probably sit here for the whole hour and talk about all the things that that uh, that I've done in the in the home industry. But that's about it. <laughs> well, I'm I'm really glad you're on the show here, Jan. I mean, for the reason you just mentioned that you know, there's been this huge online shift, but your background and your uh, skill set is gosh, you played almost every single role <laughs> that yes. we talk about. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. you've been mm -hmm. in a manufacturer seat, you're in an educator seat, you understand design, and so mm -hmm. I, I'd want to start by just hearing a little about little from you about you know, why should manufacturers invest in CEUs? Mm -hmm. Like we hear that question a lot, like, oh, should we do this? Should we not? Mm -hmm. Is it really going to have ROI? Mm -hmm. From your perspective, from the seat that you're in, like the unbiased perspective, mm -hmm. why should yeah. a manufacturer mm -hmm. be investing here? Well, do you know what? I really think that um, 
a, a big, big reason for doing it is that the professional needs to differentiate from the consumer. When we talked about how uh, the, you know, the online business is exploding, you know, I definitely you know, see that. And consumers, you know, they now have access to stuff that you know, 20 years ago, it was just me. I was just lucky if I could you know, see a manufacturer and get that information. Consumers now have so much access to information, the professional needs to go deeper. And the only way that the professional is going to be able to go deeper is to get really relevant learnings from the manufacturer. When, I, when I'm talking with manufacturers or, or if I'm writing educational uh, programs myself, I speak to the professional. I don't speak to the consumer. And I think that the, the manufacturer has that opportunity to do that because they know their stuff and uh, they're talking to a different um, person. So that's, uh, that's very important. So first of all, Jan, I have to say, thank the professional needs to go deeper. I mean, I have that in my notes. That makes so much sense because we spend a lot of time talking about the burden on manufacturers to offer end consumer education because that's what end consumers want, even though you're not their target audience. So how do you further help the professional audience and the way you, you summed it up, the professional needs to go deeper or must go deeper in order mm -hmm. to differentiate is so huge. So if I, a lot of manufacturers have some form of CEUs, whether on an official website or on their own site or many ways, and if I'm a manufacturer that's already released some type of CEU course or is currently developing one, how would you recommend that I evaluate it to know if I'm doing it right or not? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I think, you know, first off, um, you know, when you're sitting down to write to write a CEU, um, you know, even just putting aside all of the rules and the regulations, there are there's all of that. You know, I think that just like I said, you've got to uh, go through it and make sure you're talking to the professional, not the consumer. That would be the first thing that I'd be looking for. What type of little tidbits can you offer to that professional that they're going to get? Like, and I think that's another thing, too, as you know, as a designer, I've been trained in the elements and principles of design or as an architect you know i'm trained in structural and mechanical things as that uh, manufacturer writing a ceu be okay with talking that technical end of it but without making it dry so that'd be the first thing i'd go th through making sure you were talking to the professional the other thing and this is a real pet peeve of mine is to really look at your images that you want to make sure any of the images that you're using in your CEU are um, appropriate. I cannot believe how often I'll I'll be looking at you know some educational um, you know piece of information and they'll have an image and I'll be reading something and then I'll see the image and they they don't compute they you know they they've grabbed a marketing image or they they've grabbed a stock image and nobody's really paid attention and as a professional you know, you've lost me there. I've seen mistakes from, uh, you know, really, you know, from the big organizations right down to the small, the small guy, they make the mistakes, they hand off, you know, that end of it, you know, to, you know, an intern to find some images to go with it, and they miss the mark. So, uh, you know, those two things, talk to the professional, make sure your images are reflective of what you're saying would, would be very important. Can I ask you about measurement, though, because I could think about this, and manufacturers think, okay, how do I do this the right way is important, but are you thinking about, about this through the lens of how, I'm, how am I measuring ROI at the onset as well? Is that a helpful thing to think strategically about? And if, and if so, what are the ways a manufacturer can measure effectiveness? Uh, uh, effectiveness of their CEU? Yeah, like in, on, on their bottom line. Like, so there's an element of like, yes, you want your CEU to be effective for the, the architect, the designer, whoever it might be. Like you want to make sure that's valuable to them. Like that's number one, because you don't want your brand tarnished. But what kind right. of outcome should they mm -hmm. be thinking about? Like yeah. what, kind of, what kind of benefit is this going to bring the actual manufacturer? Yeah, well, I think for the actual manufacturer, if, if the manufacturer gets really good at writing the CEUs and giving the good agnostic 
information, they will start to become the, the go-to for, for the professional. Because the professionals, um, you know, we're crazy busy. And, um, you know, there, there is not a lot of time to go and look at every manufacturer that's making something. And, you know, and I think about, like, especially the building, the building products market, like, that's a really tough one. You know, how, how do you get, uh, you know, ROI, you know, with a, a melamine panel? Like, you know, that's, you know, that's something that, um, um, is there, but I look at it as a designer, and I'm doing some educating right now with with designers on um, textured melamine panels. And they, we're starting to find that there's certain manufacturers there that you know their reps are knowledgeable, and they're coming in and they're they're talking you know to us. Now I probe them you know on questions that designers need to know, but I think you know somebody that. Um, has a product like that that can actually write a CEU that isn't all technical about how many layers of, of melamine and core and all of that's in there, but what's important to the designer, I would see that eventually if they keep talking um, that way that they're going to that they're going to pull the designer in to spec their product because they're trusting them you know it's you know how do you how do you actually measure it you know it's hard to say I don't think it's I don't think you write a CEU and and the next you know the next week you know you can you know count how many you know new orders you have I think it is it is more long term and and you know with any of the marketing that you're going to do you know you do have to look at a strategy um you know, I would probably, you know, during the initial development, you know, of the CEU, make a determination of, you know, are you going specifically after the architect or specifically after the designer this round? So if it was the designer, then, you know, it, it might be tracking your inquiries coming in for designers. It might be tracking, um, you know, are designers starting to follow your blog? Is the phone ringing? What are your reps saying? You know, there's, uh, you know, I don't know if there's going to be anything that is going to be hard but you know i think that you know if you kind of look at the big picture you know start to see is there a shift on on the questions that are coming in what you're saying is there's a lot of different ways to measure it is what i'm hearing you know but mm -hmm. um i think the biggest one is are people coming back like are yeah. they coming back for more are you seeing people refer for you know your training to somebody else um is it a positive brand builder like those are things that like you want to be seen. And we talk about this a lot. Like you want to be seen as that trusted source, that trusted guide. And Absolutely. like when we do mm -hmm. our own market research with, you know, manufacturers as well as, you know, different players in the channel. The big thing people want is they want manufacturers to be that go-to expert. Mm -hmm. And if your CEU is invaluable, you're hurting your ability to market to them in other ways as well, not only with your CEUs. Exactly. And I think too, Zach, where you say if your CEU is invaluable, if your CEU is dry and boring and, uh, you know, pe people just tune out, you know, you know, a few minutes into it. Yeah. Don't, don't even do it. You know what it makes me think it, of, and this is not a great example, but it makes me think of, you know, I go on a, a flight somewhere and they had that, that minute long introduction yeah. video about, you know, here's safety on the plane. And you're like, mm -hmm. dear God, like, when is this mm -hmm. thing going to be done? Cause you can't, you can't ignore it because it's loud. It's in your face. Mm -hmm. But there are airlines the last few years, I don't know, the last decade or so, they're trying to make them entertaining and education so you actually watch them. That's a great example, though, of something that it had. I mean, the information has to be communicated. It has to be communicated exactly in the way that it comes across. You can't jazz it up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can't tell a story and someone has to assume and infer what yes. you're saying. Yes. That's mm -hmm. a great example. But the level, like, the level of elevation and creativity that's been put into those flight, not that a lot of us have been on planes lately, but into those <laughs> <laughs> in-flight safety videos. That's a great example, actually, Zach. It really is. Just, you, there's a lot out there. You know, there's... Um, I, I probably get 50 emails a day on somebody, you know, saying they've got a course or they've got this or come to this webinar, or do, you know, do something. Yeah. Differentiating yourself is, is the way to go. And, you know, I must admit, it's going to get tougher and tougher, you know, as we move more, you know, move more online. So you do, you do have to have something that is a little bit, a little bit entertaining, but it's still, you know, for me and as a, uh, if I were to now put on my professional designers, you know, hat, 
I, I want to learn something. I, I don't want to go through um, a lot of fluff. I, you know, I've got to say, I get that feedback, um, you know, quite a bit uh, from designers that get to the point. Um, if, if I were to give the biggest, you know, biggest hint, if you, there's different ways of, of um, presenting CEUs, they can be live, they can be in a PDF form online, they can, you know, they can be as a video, there's lots of different ways to do it. The one thing that drives me crazy is 10 minutes of, um, you know, who is this person? You know, yes. you know, yes. I cannot, you. you know, I, because nobody, nobody, nobody cares because nobody cares. Nobody cares. Yeah. Nobody cares. You know, they don't care you about know. you. Like if, no. if no. frankly, like if, if, if we had this podcast and all we were doing yeah. is talking about how great Beth is, people yeah. would probably listen. If we're just talking about me. You need Maybe. a different example. People would listen about me. No, I'm kidding. That would be awful. You know, I don't want to listen to that. Yeah, it would yeah. be awful. Yeah. And I think too that um, now there there is a uh, process for going through you know having your CEUs accredited, and mm -hmm. um, you know I know when I have written them I have gone through everything. Sometimes I see CEUs on on websites or online. I don't think they've gone through the <laughs> accreditation process that they should, um, but. Um, I actually will have more trust in a manufacturer if they follow the rules and they are not giving me a sales pitch mm. um, and that the title that they put on their CEU actually is what they teach and that the learning objectives that they put at the beginning are covered like those types of things um you know we can't forget about them and they and so often you know they do and I think about you know I my time is valuable. And I remember I um, put time aside to go to a webinar, you know, on a, on something that I thought, oh, this, this is great. This is something I want to learn. Um, you know, I want to know about, about this. It, um, I don't think it was an accredited CEU. It may have been, I can't remember, but um, you know, the title sounded great. And, you know, I, you know, you, you both know I'm on the West coast. So I'm up at six o'clock in the morning to go to this, you know, this uh, webinar. And the you know, great title, nothing in that webinar um, came back to that title. I'll never go back to that manufacturer. Like it, it has really turned me off. And I think in this day and age, the manufacturer needs to understand that they they can't, you know, pull, you know, pull the wool over the, the professional's eyes anymore. They're, you know, they're getting tired of it. There's too much coming at them all the time. And, um, you know, if, if the designer, architect, builder, you know, contractor are getting really good information from, from that um, manufacturer, you know, I think they can build a good, strong following. It makes me think of that Warren Buffett quote. He says, it takes 20 years to build a reputation and five minutes to ruin it. Mm -hmm. If you think about that, yeah. you'll do things differently. Mm -hmm. You know, it's Absolutely. true. Absolutely. <laughs> I heard someone rework that quote recently. I was listening to a podcast this week about that. And they said, well, but in this day and age, it's four seconds of social media. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> yeah. No pressure. No but, pressure. Yeah. Fine. And it is tough. And, and I've, uh, you know, I've got to, I've got to admit that, um, you know, sometimes it is tough to, uh, to hit on it. But, in, you know, another um, strategy I have, and I use this myself, is that that I have put together my own personal, um, you know, designer council. And, you know, it's just, you know, it's a, it's a group of designers that, that are passionate about the industry, passionate about what I do. And uh, I get together with them every quarter or even a couple of times a year. And I will, I will run my, my courses by them, or I would, I'll have them, you know, check them out um, just, just to I be able that. to give me feedback. So I've done that in my corporate um, life when I was in, in corporate um, as a product designer for seven years, I always have, I always managed a um, designer council and would use them to get the feedback before before I would launch things or before the company would launch. And they'll and give you some feedbacks going, oh, this is interesting. Oh, I want more information really on cool. this. This is boring. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's really oh, smart. Oh, absolutely. I love that. Yeah. You know, right down to, you know, I had one of um, one of the designers come back to me with my um, my layout. She loved that my PowerPoint slides were clean and simple. You know, they 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 followed good um, interior design elements and principles of design. That. You yeah. know, like a little thing like that, like 
that has resonated with me. I always make sure that everything that I put out, that I'm using my design training, you know, to make sure my even my slides look great because it can become a distraction. And um, and the, and that's I also got back from my um, design council was that yeah they loved you know it was like a 20 second introduction and that was it they commented oh you didn't go on for 10 minutes you know about you know all, you know how great you are or whatever so. I mean it's about thinking about your audience right if you're creating yeah. a CEU for a highly mm -hmm. visual highly visually trained audience like architects and interior designers mm -hmm. then your content at the very least can't be cluttered and distracting we're not asking exactly. you to care mm -hmm. about fonts as much as Zach cares yeah. <laughs> but if you have a font question, shoot it his yeah. way. He'll blow Absolutely. your mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you you should be presentable because that's going to communicate to them the quality of your content as well. I think that's a great you're, point. Yeah, you're exactly yeah, that's exactly what I'm wanting to say. And it's those little, those little details of trying to rise above, <laughs> you know, the yeah. you know, just the the chaos there. And um, you know, just you know, you want to be able to have have a product, i.e., your CEU, that um, is reflective of your business, and again, is talking to your audience. Jane, who's doing it well? What manufacturer do you look at in the space? You're like these guys set set mm -hmm. the bar. Yeah, well, it's, you know, um, that, that's a hard one to answer because I'll I'll admit to you, I've really been um, you know diving into it in the last you know couple of months, um, you know, starting to look at manufacturers. So I'll I'll kind of go back to to um, you know a few years ago. I would say um, like a firm like Kohler um, yeah. has um, has been has been really good, you know, just based on their whole marketing plan, um, you know, just how they take their marketing and, and bring it into their CEUs. I've been to a few of their CEU presentations in the last in the last couple of years. Um, you know, they they've been pretty good, um, you know, popping on to some of the. Um, providers like AEC Daily and um, uh, um, Hanley Wood, you know, there's different, different places. And, and it's kind of a hit and miss, like, I, you know, I'll kind of go through and, and it's a good thing. You know, you're, you've actually um, prompted me, I'm going to go through and start looking at them and, and writing down who I think are, are doing a good job. That's great. <laughs> Jan, for our listeners, what advice would you give them if they're listening to this and going, yeah, like you've sold me, I need to either double down and invest in this area I haven't, or I need to elevate my CEU efforts. What one piece of advice would you give them? Well, I think um, the one the one thing that I would do is uh, make the decision at the beginning. You know, who are you targeting? You can't be everything to everybody. So, are you go, are you targeting the architect? Are you targeting the designer, the home builder, the kitchen designer? And then go to that organization and kind of get their criteria uh, criteria for the CEUs. Because if you look at like architects, it's the AIA designers, um, especially other U.S. It's ASID home builders in the US NARI has um, accreditation mm -hmm. and uh, for kitchen designers NKBA does. So I would go decide exactly who the target market is, then go look at what that organization is looking for, because they're promoting that you know, within their organization. So you want to make sure you don't try to muddle it all together and try to be something to all of them and miss, miss the boat. Love it. Jan, for mm -hmm. our listeners, if they want to connect with you, what's the best way for them to do that? Um, you probably um, email me direct. I actually do carry it around all the time and uh, they can reach me um, at vestibule and you know, another topic one day on the name, but vestibule spelt V-E-S-T-A-B-U-L dot design uh, at gmail.com. Yeah. And then also to the website is good too. You can contact me through um, vestibule.com. Is, is it has got everything there. That's great. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming to the show. This has been super valuable, insightful information. I know mm -hmm. we hear, we hear questions all the time from people about CEUs. And so I'm mm -hmm. sure that people will reach out. And if you have questions, definitely connect with Jan. And for our listeners, if you mm -hmm. enjoyed this content, make sure you go to venue.com slash podcast to subscribe and get more until next time. I'm Zach Williams alongside Beth Pop Nikolov. Thanks everybody.